one part Dungeons and Dragons, one part Pirates of the Caribbean, a little bit of Robin Hood, mix in some superficial 90s era eco-awareness, and you have all the makings for a classic Hasbro Marvel multimedia marketing march to the toy aisles. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of the Pirates of Dark Water. Pirates of Dark Water ran for 21 episodes from 1991 to 1993. It was created by David Kirshner, who you might know from some of his other work, like the 1986 animated film An American Tale, or, on the other end of the spectrum, producer of all seven Child's Play films and creator of the animatronic Chucky doll itself. <laughs> it was produced by Hanna-Barbera, where David himself was chairman and follows the adventures of a young man named Ren in his quest to not only assert his newly discovered birthright as the Prince of Octopon, but to rebuild the entire kingdom to its once great glory. The kingdom, the entire planet Myrrh, are being consumed by an evil oily black substance called dark water rising up from deep within the planet. Ren recruits a misfit band of adventurers to help him in his quest to obtain the 13 treasures of rule. Together with Tula the Ecomancer, Nidla the Monkey Bird, and Ayaz the other pirate, they search the blackened seas of the planet Myrrh for mysterious ancient relics. These relics, the 13 treasures of rule, will give them the power to fight back against the Dark Dweller, the evil force who created the Dark Water in the first place, and split up the ancient relics knowing that they were the only things that could defeat him. But he's not the only one attempting to collect the treasures of rule and utilize their power to remake the planet in their own image. Ren is pursued by the evil Bloth and his crew of misfit adventurers. What's a guy gotta do to get a bunch of regular run-of-the-mill adventurers to crew my ship? What's with the hiring process for boats? Are there no legitimate sources of labor anymore? Is there no value in proper team building through training and experience? The first five episodes aired in 1991 to kick off the series and were collectively called simply Dark Water. The same five episodes were then incorporated and re-aired as the first five episodes of season one later in 1991. Eight additional episodes were added to bring the first season to a total of 13, and the series was formally retitled The Pirates of Dark Water. Hanna-Barbera put some money into the show. The cast was exceptional. The first five pilot episodes featured Roddy McDowell as the monkey bird niddler. How am I ever going to gather the 13 treasures of rule when I can't even unite the four of us? Oh, Rand, don't be so hard on yourself. A few days ago, you were just a lighthouse keeper. And while McDowell would be replaced in the ongoing series by Frank Megatron Welker, still, Frank Welker. How am I ever going to gather the 13 treasures of rule when I can't even unite the four of us? Oh, come on, Ren, don't be so hard on yourself. Two days ago, you were just a lighthouse keeper. Ren was voiced by George Newbern, who has been the animated Warner Brothers DC Superman since 2001, and as recent as 2017 in the video game Injustice 2. Tula the Ecomancer was voiced by Jody Benson, better known as Disney's The Little Mermaid. Hector Elizondo voiced Ayaz, Tim Curry voiced Conk, Peter Optimus Prime, Cullen, and Rene Abergenois as well. It is rare that an animated series employs so many prominent actors in major roles. Pirates of Dark Water wasn't a scheme of the week type show. It was an ongoing dramatic narrative that built relationships through shared experiences. It was chapters in a deliberate order encouraging you not to miss an episode. Each piece advanced toward the ultimate intended ending of the story. Set sail for adventure, the Pirates of Dark Water. Now, for the race with Ren and his stallion crew as they search for the treasures of rule. But beware. The treasure's no good to a dead man. Bloth and his wicked pirates are on the attack, so the race is armed for battle with a boulder hurling catapult. It's the deck, Kong. A power blast harpoon and a mainsail glider. You're sunk, Bloth. The pirates of dark water. He stole separately. As with most animation created between, well, the creation of animation and, like, today, Pirates of Dark Water was built around a toy line manufactured by Hasbro. A single wave of eight figures and one heavily underscaled pirate ship, the Wraith. The toy line featured Ren, Nidler, Aya, Zuli, Bloth, Conk, Mantis, and Jote, a reminder that this was during a time where selling a figure of a character who was canonically called a monkey bird was better for business than adding a single female. Each figure was a unique mold, no parts recycling, heights varied between four and six inches, 
Each came with one or two accessories, mostly five points of articulation, and the burden of determining the success of the brand on the ability to coax dollars from parents through their children. Pirates of Dark Water was featured in several media formats, as was the long-established practice when it came to Hasbro-branded properties. Marvel Comics released a six-issue series in 1991. The series would be extended for a total of nine, with a three-issue story at the end of the run that was original, not adapted from the animated series itself. <laughs> No one will notice. <laughs> Sunsoft produced Pirates of Dark Water video games for both the Super NES and Sega Genesis, and the Pirates of Dark Water role-playing game hit shelves in 1994, but at that point, Pirates of Dark Water had already met the end of its short run. With an all-star cast and a higher production value than many of the shows of the day, Pirates of Dark Water didn't find an audience large enough to keep it afloat. Sales of the toys were mild, and several of the episodes ran into issues causing them to be aired months later than originally scheduled. Even under the best circumstances, it doesn't take much to lose the interest of 10 to 14 year olds, and Pirates' fate was sealed. The Pirates of Dark Water was unceremoniously canceled after 21 episodes before Ren and his crew could even find the final five of the 13 Treasures of Rule. Today, the Pirates of Dark Water can be found on DVD in the long boxes at your local comic shops and for around 10 to $25 per figure on the secondary market. Of its legacy, the Scarecrow Video Movie Guide said it was, quote, serious, well-written, and had a certain amount of craft in its character animation and watercolor backgrounds. Collider included it in their 14 Greatest Kids Cartoons of the 90s. IMDB has it as the 25th highest-ranked animated series of all time, ahead of Star Wars Rebels and just behind SpongeBob SquarePants. Pirates of Dark Water was an ambitious original creation by a studio that invested money in a story and concept they believed in. It featured an all-star cast, it was supported by an action figure line, comics, and video games. The series and characters still have diehard fans holding out, hoping that someone, somehow, will be able to complete the series someday. Until then, the fate of the city of Octopon, the planet Myrrh, and the crew of the Wraith forever battle against the fleet of Bloth and the evil of the Dark Water. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you're ready to join my misfit crew of adventurers. The more misfit, the better. The most misfit, to the point where I can't even get the team to properly function with each other, and then I'll know that nothing can stop us. <laughs> Cut.